Hello, welcome to my talk all about the fluids. This talk is on the calculation of the pressure in atmosphere and in oceans. This talk is to illustrate a simple application of the fluid dynamics equation, Euler or Navier-Stokes equation, and on how we can calculate the pressure in atmosphere and in ocean especially the atmospheric pressure. Let's start from the Navier-Stokes equation, the universal governing equation for fluid force and motion of Newtonian fluids. That means the Navier-Stokes equation could be used for both dynamics and statics. Don't worry too much about the complicated fluid dynamics equation. It is just for illustration here. I'm not going to talk how we can solve this difficult equation. In statics, the Navier-Stokes equation can be much simplified since all terms related to the velocity will vanish. So we have the simplified equation as this. This static pressure differentiation equation can be used for all fluids, not necessarily limited for Newtonian fluids. If we use the Cartesian coordinates as in this plot, then the equation can be simplified as this. Here, the negative sign means the gravitational acceleration is in an opposite direction of Zx, and the pressure is a function of Z, and independent of x and y. All these are universal equations for the pressure in static fluids. The static pressure differentiation equation can be also derived from the fluid element method as seen in this plot and fluid element. And the force due to the pressure difference in that direction will balance the weight of the fluid element and this the force from the pressure and this the weight of the element. So this equation can be written as this. Similarly, in the x and the y directions, we have the equations as this, and we have the equation this as well. From all this, again, in the static fluid, the pressure is a function of z, and independent of x and the y. Uh, this equation are same as those from the Navier-Stokes equation. The differential equation for the static pressure in water is given as this. No W is the density of the water. For fresh water, the density is about 1000 kg per cubic meter. And for seawater, it is 1,025 kg per cubic meter. If we integrate this pressure, we have the equation as this. Here, P0 is the atmospheric pressure at the sea level. That is, P0 equals 101,325 pascals. It's very close to a bar, it's 100,000 pascals. This is also close to the pressure of 10 meter water height. Tiger H equals minus Z at the water depth. So we have the pressure equation at this. Here, P minus P0 is the gauge pressure. The gauge pressure is actually the pressure we are using in our daily lives. We can see the gauge pressure is proportional to the water depth. 
If the pressure differential equation is used for atmosphere, we have the equation as this, and the air density is 1.22 kg per cubic meter at the sea level. As we have done for the pressure in water, a direct integration would give an expression as this. From this expression, it can be seen that the pressure is decreasing with the increase of the altitude in atmosphere. And this seems sensible. The higher in the air, the lower pressure. However, based on this formula for the pressure in atmosphere, the pressure would reach the absolute zero at an altitude of Z1 of 8434 meters. This is the height lower than the mountain Everest, which is at the height 8000 848 meter, and obviously there is no vacuum or a negative pressure over the mountain Everest. Also, for most passenger airplanes, they fly at an altitude of roughly 13,000 meters, and in that height, there must be air for flying the airplane. Then, what is wrong with the calculation? Is this differential equation incorrect? The answer is no. This equation is universally correct because it is from Euler or Navier-Stokes equation and from the basic physics. The problem is in the direct integration, since both the air density and the gravitational acceleration g might be functions of the altitude z. If we consider the maximum height of the Earth's atmosphere, z equals 100 kilometers, this is the height of the International Common Line, the outboard of the Earth's atmosphere. Such a height could cause a change of 3% in gravitational acceleration. Hence, the gravitational acceleration can be considered as a constant. A large change of the air density it's with the attitude. It can change dramatically with the attitude and the temperature as well. So that's why the previous direct integration is not correct. To obtain the correct pressure, we can use the ideal gas equation for the air. This is a very good approximation for engineering application. Here, low air is the air density. Rs is the specific gas constant. And T is the absolute temperature of the air. Using this idea equation and the density expression, we would have a pressure differential equation as this. In here, G and Rs are both constant. And the, in the equation, the absolute temperature T changes with the attitude. This can be seen in the next slide. In the plot, we can see the temperature changes with the attitude. Generally, they are four atmospheres in the Earth's atmosphere. Troposphere, the atmosphere from the Earth's surface up to 11 kilometers in the space. 
stratosphere, which is above the troposphere, extends from 11 kilometers to 50 kilometers. The next sphere is the mesosphere, which extends from 50 kilometers to 80 kilometers. And the last one, summer sphere, up to 100 kilometers. More details can be found in Wikipedia website or other references. However, our attention here is the temperature change with the altitude. It can be seen that from this plot, the temperature change with the altitude may either decrease or increase. For instance, in the troposphere, this is the atmosphere that all weather condition we can have on Earth happen in this sphere. Its temperature is decreasing linearly with the altitude from 15 degrees at sea level to minus 56.5 degrees at the upper boundary of the troposphere. In the troposphere, the temperature can be expressed as this, a linear relation with the altitude. If we use this and the pressure differential equation, we have the pressure differential equation as this. Now we can integrate this equation. We got the pressure expression as this. This is the pressure formula for the pressure in the troposphere. And accordingly, if we employ the ideal gas equation, we can calculate the air density if the pressure and the, the temperature are known. For a reference, they are generalized the formula for the pressure in atmosphere up to 85 kilometers according to the U.S. standard atmosphere in 1976. For calculating the atmosphere pressure, the piecewise method must be used, and the relevant parameters are given in the table. For different temperature, not plates at different altitudes, we can choose different formula. If Lb is non-zero, we use this equation. If Lb is zero, we use this equation to calculate the pressure. In the plot is the calculate atmospheric pressure. It can be seen the atmospheric pressure drops quickly with the altitude. Similarly, the formulas for the air density in the atmosphere using piecewise method for the density up to altitude of 85 kilometers. We can also calculate the air density using the ideal gas equation as this. If the pressure P and the temperature T are long, so if we draw the air density changes with the altitude, we can see in the plot, again, the air density drops quickly with the altitude. Now we can compare the calculation of the pressure in this talk to the formula of the U.S. standard atmosphere. It can be seen in this plot. These two methods give the same result for the atmospheric pressure. From this calculation, 
we can see on the mountain Everest the pressure drops to about 30 percent at that at the sea level and the air density is less than 40 percent at the sea level. For the airplane flight at the altitude 13,000 meters, the pressure is 16% of the atmospheric pressure at the sea level, and the density is 22%. Now we come back to the pressure differential equation for water and examine why we don't have such problems as those for atmospheric pressure. In the deepest ocean, it would be 10,995 meters below the sea level. For these steps, the gravitational acceleration changes less than 0.35%. Also, a huge static pressure at the deep ocean, it could cause the density change less than 5%. And in nature, the water temperature is always between 0 to 30 degrees. And for such a temperature range, the water density is almost a constant which changes less than 0.5%. So as such, in the natural world, both the water density and the gravitational acceleration can be reasonably considered as constant, so that the integration for the pressure in water can be carried out directly without large errors. Here, the pressure in water can be simply calculated as this. The pressure is proportional to the water depth, H. So if we plot out the pressure in the deepest ocean, the Mariana Trench, the static pressure at the trench would be 100 million pascals, about 1,100 bars. Imagine how large a pressure force would be in such a depth. If we calculate the pressure force on a square centimeter, the force would be more than one ton. And for an area of a square meter, it would be more than 10,000 tons. Thus, there will be an enormous pressure force acting on a structure diving in the deepest ocean.